Just one more hurdle, just one more hurdle required before they take part in the final of their schoolboy lives. Touching distance will feel like an ocean of expectations. Their respective histories, whether long or short, will feel enormous under its weight. Sabina Park, the venue for this much anticipated showdown, Mona High versus St. George's College, Audacity against Legacy Part Two. Wherever you're watching all over the world, thank you so much for joining our coverage here on the Home of Champions. My name is Donald Oliver. With me is Dwight Jeremiah. And wow, we're looking forward to this one big time. Really looking forward to this, uh, this one. On the evidence of the titles, one, 22 for George's, zero for Mona. And the fact that as an institution, George is 129 years a senior of Mona, you're tempted to say that this one is a battle between David and Goliath. However, based on the Craig Butler era and their performances on the field, you are sure to say that this one is Goliath versus Goliath. Mona, most definitely are here to play. This one has all the making for a classic, and I strongly believe it will be a classic. So excited for this one, Donald, so excited. Mona has had that meteoric rise over the last few seasons since the introduction of uh, 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 coach uh, Craig Butler. And uh, yeah, they would be considered a heavyweight as, as well, but really and truly, uh, they know that uh, a lot is expected of them but because of that history that they do have, which is a short history, maybe not as much pressure as St. George's College, the light blues of North Street. Well, I'm not quite sure about that because when you hear the rhetoric from Craig Butler, he wants to win this thing badly. And I'm pretty sure he's transmitting that to his players. For George's, yes, they've won this many times and the expectations are always high when they are at this stage of the tournament. It's been a, a, a strange one for them this season. Pretty much for many have flown under the radar and appear just at the busy end of the season looking really ominous. And there's a quiet confidence being exuded by their coach that they can take take it all this season well these are the officials today Alexi Perry will be in the middle Damon Williams and Alonzo Bennett will assist him the fourth official is uh, Mala Reed yeah both these two teams you know were beaten throughout the season until their exploits in the Champions Cup but still remain on blemish in the Manning Cup. Let's take a look at the Mona High starting lineup. Akeem Bernard is between the sticks, the back four of Dante Peralta, Stephon Johnson, Robinho Gordon, and Maquan Parchment. In the middle of the park, Alex Suazo, Carlton Brown, and Denzel McKenzie. They're number 10 with 10 goals and 20 assists so far this season. Incredible figures. Keshane Gordon will be on the left. Uh, Romarian Thomas will be on the right with eight goals through the middle. Damarian Harris. Yeah, and they look to play 5-3-2, uh, but you know Craig Butler, his system rotate. Denzel McKenzie, you can't say too much about him. A very versatile player, central defensive, mid-central, mid-attacking, mid-left side, right side, plays everywhere. Has a good shot on him as well in the third season. Dejon Davis is between the sticks for St. George's College. They have a back four of Jindu Powell, Shaquan Clark, O'Neill Mitchell, Michael Pennant, and Ajani Peart. Zabir Taylor, the hard-working number six, will be the holding midfielder behind Adrian Reed and Tayshawn O'Neill up top, Brian Burkett. They're number 10 with 20 goals uh, so far this season, as well as 11 assists. Matthew Spence is alongside him with 12 goals and five assists. Yeah, Burkett has said he set a target for 30 this season, 10 off the pace. As his experience of playing in the Premier League with uh, Dombey Holden, says he's looking to strengthen himself and be a little bit quicker. Uh, Left-footed player that is very, very talented as well. Well, it's almost time for serious business here at Sabina Park. The last time these two teams met, Mona knocked out St. George's College. That was just last season. 
out of the quarterfinal round and went on to move on to the semis of the Manning Cup. They would have faced Jamaica College and eventually went down by two goals to one to the eventual winners. But they feel that they can go a step further this year and this is the step that they have been waiting on. Well, yeah, they were knocked out by Jamaica College this time. Georges, they face at this stage, having knocked out Jamaica College themselves, Georges, in their round of the quarterfinals. And Neva Bell says he has a good surface on which to display his football today. And despite the loss in the Champions Cup 3-1 to Clarendon College, he feels that against any other team, including this one, if they play that way, then he'll come out victorious. Let's see if that's the case. For St. George's College, their first and last titles, 100 years apart. They last won in 2012, having won the first in 1912. They have waited for a minute. And now they're just 90 minutes away from going to another Manning Cup final. St. George's College will get us on the way here. They'll be kicking towards the Crossroads region and uh, Mona will be kicking towards downtown Kingston and the Caribbean Sea. And here they are with early possession on the right-hand side. Romarian Thomas, the ever-dangerous Romarian Thomas, looking for the options and the give-and-go. Well played, Thomas sends it across. A foot is there deciding the outcome of that one in favor of St. George's College as they try to get out of their own half, but Mona, they have it back. Searching ball through the middle. Not the best clearance. Th Thomas was looking to blast that one on target. And it uh, was some way away. It's going to be a goal kick to St. George's College. Yeah, Mona starting sprightly here and having the first set of attack, just setting the tone. Always feel as a coach you want, you've always encouraged your players that if they can get the first shot off, the first attack, that really sets them up nicely. It's a long way to go. You mentioned that both teams coming off defeat in the Champions Cup. There's uh, the hopeful ball over the top. It was uh, well in front of Matthew Spence. So maybe just uh, an additional buzz in the aftermath of that defeat last time out for both these teams in the Champions Cup. Thomas again, he's seen quite a bit of the ball. Hit over the top. And uh, clearance made by Powell. Mona with all the possession. Oh, that's wonderfully done inside the area and then just run out of real estate yep that's kishane gordon yeah good first touch there and then just to put it over the player's head and then look to drive on but then good defending there doesn't need to dive in uh was clark just shepherd him along the line and out over the goal line for a, a goal kick so that's smart defending there you so often you see defenders trying to win the ball they're trying to just to poke it away well here's an attempt from distance and no issues there for davis and i think adrian reed is down yeah and asked if he wants some assistance doesn't want the assistant said no maybe that would help the georges somewhat just take the sting out of it and break the momentum of mona is Craig Butler, technical director there, would be pleased with the start of his Mona team and would want that to continue. Last season, he wasn't on the sidelines for this matchup. He was actually looking on uh, from the stands over by the National Stadium East Field. I feel but this one means a lot to him. Yeah. long throw but back there 
That looks to be Shaquan Clark with the clearance. I wonder which Georges we're, we're going to get today over the length and breadth of this game so far. Uh, not being able to settle, Never Bell did say that uh, his Georges team one day will look like Brazil and the next day they'll look like Georges. And the way Brazil is going now, I don't know, maybe Georges is better. I leave you alone to the fight with the Brazilian fans. <laughs> Mona sending it out wide and just couldn't quite grasp it over on the, this near side here. And not much coming from Neverbell on the sideline, sidelines with his team under the cut somewhat. But he, he has his style and he, he normally used the first 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes of the game just to look at the opponent to see what they're doing and then to see if his in-game changes are necessary. Because that's what he's doing at the moment. Ball sent inside the area at the back post, and St. George's College, they do have numbers there. And an opportunity again for Thomas, couldn't quite control it. And St. George's College with the clearance. collects and that's a lovely bit of movement you know setting it out wide and the ball is inside the area and it's knotted behind for a corner kick to Mona High they look ominous when they go forward Mona they are looking to switch the point of attack on many occasions not afraid to go direct there's a corner kick. It's a good looking one at the back post. Decided to take a touch initially. I'm not sure if that was the better option. When he did take the shot, yeah, he still had time, but couldn't hit the target. Marion Thomas there, and I, and I felt could have gone first time with the strike. Kept his eye on it. Yeah, there he came over to him. Yeah, he could have laced it there. And then in the end, with all the first touch and setting himself up, still didn't make proper connection with the instep, but just needed to watch that one right on to the instep. Uh, missed the opportunity, not having gone first time with the volley. Here Difficult. they come again, Mona. Thomas trying to place that inside. He'll have another opportunity here. Oh, that's delightful from Thomas. Sends it inside, and it's held on eventually by to John Davis. But again, uh, another chance created by Thomas on the right-hand side. And St. George's College just escaping that one. Well, earlier he did do some good defensive work, shepherding out the attack clock, but was bamboozled there. Yep. And the judges will need some overloads in those wide areas, 1v1 not working out. Coach Bell just to click into them earlier, just to calm down still. And whether this early storm. For Mona, they hope it's a sustained, long lasting storm. Mackenzie is behind this one. Lays it off to Thomas. He hasn't gotten his shooting range. But he's been involved in almost everything for yeah, Mona. Yeah, yeah. His open game play has been good and uncharacteristic. Cully by George's, they're just giving the ball away cheaply, unforced. Well, here's Mona again with the effort that's wide of the mark. Just letting that one pop there. Yeah, they to just, Shane. They seem Gordon. rusty here, eh? George's. Mm -hmm. Not settled yet. And Mona will do well to try and hurt them as they're suffering now because you know at some point they'll get into their own Georges. And if all you have to show for your period of dominance is possession and 
shot taken and it's not going to count for much well here they are again trying to make the transition into the attacking third has been unsuccessful so far Mona looks as if they are a well drilled unit which comes as little surprise but they have to do some defending now they do have speed at the back that's banged into touch Powell with the throw that's headed out again a huge entourage coming in to the north stand from St. George's College is, uh, here's the throw inside the area headed away St. George's College now will be able to apply the pressure Powell sent it back out wide but can't find a teammate Adrian Reed committing the infringement there and uh, Alexa Perry telling him a few words <laughs> he has no more chances if he were to commit a similar infringement it's not the initial one it's after here yeah, it's not his ball and he's saying he was in his path <laughs> there's a big Failure for him to go around. Oh, that's lovely again from Thomas. Lays it in the path well. Gets the return. Well, he should have. He was running into space there inside the box, but his teammate couldn't find him. And Mona, they get it again. Played forward once more. Two to aim for inside the box. And St. George's College doing enough. Yeah, Thomas has started like a house on fire here. Can't do anything wrong. I just now got a little lucky with the bounce, but then sometimes you create your own luck, and because of what he has been doing in the early parts of this game, uh, defenders are a little bit hesitant. Well, he's, he's gone into the referee's book after that challenge from Burkett, that late challenge. that came in here I think it was Alex Suazo who's gone into the book Peralta was or the Peralta one. rather is the one who got the yellow card Here's Mona. Oh, that wasn't clear properly. And St. George's College will have the possession. Taylor does well to keep it in play. Trying to find an outlet. Ran into traffic. Taylor is in the way. I really like Zabir Taylor. Yeah, he's really a good player. Now he goes the other way. Touched inside. And uh, didn't continue his run over on that right-hand side and committed the infringement there, Ajani Peart. Yeah, it was his fault because he should have continued his run. Teammate expected him to continue that run, played without looking, and that's okay. It's just that he didn't give him that option. Yeah, checked his run. Peart working overtime over on the far side. A former Georgian himself actually represented St. George's College in the under 14 final, did Peralto in 2019. Scored the winning goal in that final, in fact. And that goal had come against Woolmer's boys. And how the guards sometimes just make it happen. Is he. Is it possible for him to do so on an overlapping run here today? But he's on a yellow card and maybe will be a target for Georges.
George is yet to get the attacking play going. A lot of the time spent in their own half. They, they usually are sometimes, let me say that again, sometimes they're on the rope a lot in certain matches, St. George's College. They do the rope-a-dope very well. <laughs> well, they've been managing here, haven't been hurt by all the suffering and imposed upon them by Mona. Burkett with a touch inside. Spence tried to get there. And there's a whistle on the play. The flag was up offside. I think it was against Spence. He needs to be big today, Brian Burkett. And if he is, then it's going to be big trouble there for Mona. Really a good talent, lovely left foot. Players like that, they just need a moment, just a moment. He's not. Reed sends it long. An opportunity for St. George's College. Ooh. Just spoke about that left foot. Just spoke about the moment. Didn't quite capture it. Yeah. But Akeem Bernard was rooted, wasn't he? Praying and hoping that that was off target, which is which it was because there was no way he would have got to that. Yeah, I think Burkett realized he was being closed down from behind and just rushed that shot in the end. But yeah, moments like those, he'll only get better. Well, it was a really good chance, wasn't it? Mona looking to respond. Here just to ensure that he keeps a, a tab on this encounter, not allowing it to get out of hand. Mitchell with the throw, Mackenzie. He hasn't seen a lot of the ball, has he? The game just gets into an even pace here, not because quality has significantly improved from uh, George's, but Mona themselves. You know, some unforced errors. Burkett. Or rather, that was Spence over on the far side. Anywhere will do. St. George's College settling more and more in this one. Reed trying to find Taylor, the interception made. Trying to string that one through. Hasn't gotten a little bit scrappy. Ball played over the top, and uh, that should go out into touch. Ryan, 
Really warm conditions here, by the way, at Sabina Park. I was yeah. a bit concerned with how quickly Mona started and if they were able to sustain it. Powell with a nice touch inside. Taylor was trying to find him out wide. And here's Tayshawn O'Neill. Was hounded out of possession. Yeah, good defensive work there from Mona. They just coded him out much traffic for him to get through. Reed couldn't find that pass, which would have been telling. What is telling here about George's is that they're not getting the distinct build up be between the, you know, the, the thirds. Or the build up going through the thirds not really getting that a lot of direct play Mitchell causing the foul there yeah in the end is a shot on the back of Thomas well, it's going to be difficult to maintain a high tempo in this heat you mentioned, Donna. I mean, we're feeling it here, let alone the players out in the park running about. You want fans up here? Here's a free kick that's taken. Peralta goes at the back post. And uh, it goes behind for a, a corner kick to Mona. Yeah, the defender didn't stay with it long enough. Mona never gave up on it. Lovely touch out wide. Pierce. Oh, that's a wonderful first touch. Still inside the area. Tries to take the shot, does eventually. And it goes straight into the hands of Akeem Bernard. St. George's College with the opportunity. Yeah, that's one of the first times that we saw the build-up going through the thirds and was much better for them. That's what we know they're good at. That's when they're at their best. And we saw a glimpse of it there. Parchment with the throw for Mona. We'll try again. Sends it inside the area and uh, connection made at the back post. There's the cross coming inside again and the whistle goes. Yeah, the offside trap works. Download the Sports Max app today. From the Google Play or the App Store, yep, you can download it. Keep in touch with all the happenings on your home of champions. And the, there's going to be the water break taken, the official water break here. Still to see a goal in this Dwight Jeremiah. Yeah, and and it's sustained quality as well. Mona, they started really brightly and had Georges under the cot, but they pretty much grew in the game. Georges, uh, Mona backed off somewhat you have to say in terms of their intensity and uh, I guess the conditions didn't afford them the, the, the luxury to be able to be persistent with it um, and Georges took the opportunity also to grow in the game and just before the break there we saw them going through their paces in going through the third uh, Mona this contingency here enjoying themselves but also looking to will their team on We can see the players not just taking in the water, but pretty much 
showing themselves with it. But a lot for these two coaching staffs to work out to get their team to be more fluent and threatening. Mona, they've had several opportunities going forward for George's pretty much the best opportunity fell to their number 10, Burkett. Play about to restart now, after that intermission. The water break. Reed. Again, trying to go over the top. Sends it out wide. Peart. Lovely touch inside. Can line up a shot. Oh, it's wide of the mark. Just wide of the target here. It was Burkett again who let fly from distance. Yeah, I said he has a lovely left foot. I did pick it up again in a pocket of space. This time, a lot more time than he got the first time. And would have expected him at least to hit the target. He's disappointed. I am too, because I know of his capabilities and what that left foot can do. But yeah, you don't call his name a lot, but little moments like those, he can make you pay. Oh, a little bit lackadaisical there, and Mona looking to pounce. And St. George's College, lucky that they got away with that one. Yeah, it was Powell there who was on his heels. And then some. <laughs> Mona again applying the press in the attacking third. Looking to get a, a ball across, and no issues there for Davis. Davis should be fresh. He's in the... The only bit of shade that is on the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I envy him. Lofted ball looking for Taylor. Wasn't accurate enough. Thomas. Mitchell now. Lovely ball inside to Taylor. Taylor was trying to play it into the attacking third once more, slipping that pass through. Mona read it. Powell. Tayshawn O'Neill. Spence. Lovely stuff by St. George's College. Until Mona, the defense got in the way. They're settling now into a rhythm. The team from North Street. And here they come again. Ball played inside, looking for Spence. Now Zabir Taylor. Lovely turn. Spence gets it back. O'Neill, Burkett, trying to play the one-two with Adrian Reed. Ball sent out wide. St. George's College inside the area, and the challenge was timely, you know. Yeah, to perfection. And he had to get it right because it was in the box. There's a lofted ball inside the area. And it's headed out into touch. So they're a team that knows how to uh, be on the ropes and get themselves out of a spot. Uh, Powell with a throw inside the area. And Mona back there, booting it long.
finalists in George's College with a few jabs of their own. Long awaited and finally arrived, making this a proper contest. But a little rehydration break really put some pep in their step, George's. Taylor, O'Neill, ball over the top, Spence giving chase. But again, Mona's defense organized there. Yeah, for a moment, I thought Spence would have gotten on the end of it. Here they come against St. George's College. Yeah, not a lot of movement in front of the ball. All in one line. It's clear that Mona's out ball is to their right side. Just had to observe St. George's College trying to get out of that predicament there. There wasn't any panicking. And that's because they've been given the confidence uh, from the coach that, yeah, you do that. You get into trouble sometime, but if you're good at it, you'll get out of it most times. It takes some steam to do that. Suazo inside. Peralta now. Spence over on that far side trying to win it for St. George's College and he does. He's a hustler, isn't he? And sends it forward. Anil has been doing a lot of chasing as well. He has. Is he suffering from a bit of cramp there? Spence. Looks to be in some discomfort. Expel a lot of energy just now. Chased a few lost causes as well. But he's a fighter and does win back possession a lot of times for George's and protect the ball well, hold it up so that others can join in the play as their front man. A lot of it is expected of him as well. Five goals so far this season for Spence. Take, you know, trying to play the ball over on the near side here. Twisting and turning, looking for that additional yard of space. Lovely ball inside. And here's a shot from outside the area from Mackenzie. First real attempt to make an impact on the game. Yeah, the cross looked more dangerous than the shot in the end.
Harris has moved over now to this near side on the wing, the number 11 for Mona. He started off the games in a central position and uh, has switched now with Romario and Thomas. Who is now playing centrally? The game needs some spark. Yeah, both teams just cautious. Not wanting to make a mistake, Mackenzie's ball inside wasn't the best. They'll try again, Mona has space to shoot, and the shot was blocked. St. George's College with the clearance up towards O'Neill. Taylor, oh no, that wasn't the best from O'Neill. Now the ball over the top, the flag stays down. Oh, that challenge had to be made. Critical for it to have been done there. And it came at the right moment because, well, well it's, that's, Thomas that's was going to let there, fly, is, right? Was this an offside play? Because... No, the flag didn't go up. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, yeah. based on that, it would... But it's it a, was foul. a foul, oh. actually. Flag stayed down. Yeah, the flag had stayed here. down. And Thomas... Oh, yeah, yeah, you could see that after the play. Defender got the ball. Well, Thomas would really want to do yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was a chance and a half. And the caught over that ball over the top, and it's it, it's really not a good play there from George's there. Three at the back to be caught up by one ball over the top. Not really good defending. Picked up by Carlton Brown now. Sends it across to Peralto. Gordon. Gordon sending it inside, but Thomas had a couple of defenders by him. They'll try again. And the corner kick being awarded to Mona. It's like these two teams are taking spells in terms of the attacking thrust. And if it's a condition, so when you expel so much energy in a spell of attack, you uh, they're trying to just catch their breath, recharge themselves. Corner kick to Mona High here. Ball delivered inside, repelled at the near post by St. George's College. Mona will send another ball inside. Here it comes, the keeper halfway there, and the head off the bar. Another big chance for Mona High to take the lead. That was close again. Seem to be Gordon on the end of it. Let's have a look here. But yeah, got in front of the defender. Good header. Flush on the crossbar. It yeah. was Gordon. Yeah. But also, you saw it coming because the corner kick was initially repelled. Georges was very slow in, in, in stepping up. And so kept a lot of players on side. Probably too comfortable in the shade. Yeah, that's... A bit snarky. But as the ball goes away from your defensive area, you need to step up to become compact, to, to, to really nullify the threat of players committed in the attacking third to try and play them offside. Uh, they were pretty slow in coming out and almost paid the price. Again. Hopeful ball inside at the back post, and it's put away! Again, hesitancy at the back, and Mona High, they take the lead in this Manic Cup semi-final. It seems to have been Thomas here who got that one. He's been the protagonist for Mona, the main one since the start of the game. And he, you feel, just top off that one. I spoke about them being slow in coming out and uh, the defense of the judges flat-footed a little bit hesitant that long ball coming in let's have a look here yeah just side-footed in 
Yeah, it was Thomas. It was Thomas. The game probably needed that. For Marion Thomas. Well, he looked the most likely source early in this one. His ninth goal of the campaign. And Mona High with the advantage over St. George's College. And I think it's fair to say that they deserved it. They really deserved it based on the amount of pressure we saw them put on St. George's College. Just not defending the ball coming into the box a lot, Donald. Just a bit static, not reading the trajectory of it. And then when it do falls, they're not quick enough to react. Thomas winning that one. I think there was probably a handled ball there from Gordon. Too ambitious there, trying to flick it over three players. Thomas, incidentally, had switched to the right side for Mona, the left side rather. He's coming down the right early on. Because of that switch, he was on that side to Pounds. Here's St. George's College trying to respond. Ball played inside, and it's a good header away, you know. St. George's College trying to recycle it in the attacking third. Here they come again. On his left foot, feeds it to Taylor. Taylor curling that one! That's magnificent! Sabir Taylor! One of the standouts of this team finally gets his first goal this season. And doesn't he deserve it? And look at the cracker jack of a goal. It was St. George's College level now. Well, that's a beauty. That's a beauty all day long. You could just watch that over and over again. As Burkett laid it off to him. Didn't go for power here just measured that attempt and it went into the direction of the goalkeeper that's how precise it was exquisitely done just look at it here yeah it couldn't have been placed any higher any lower and it would have hit the crossbar or the palm of the goalkeeper that was exquisite magnificently done i don't think another player on this st george's college team deserves a goal like that more than Zabir Taylor did. Tell you, I saw him two seasons ago and I really was impressed. Took my William Nip team to play the George's Cup and he was there, really an architect of a lot of things bright and beautiful that George's did. He's coming to the fore now, matured nicely. And I, I, I guess he'll be watching that over and over again. Long throw taken. He's taking up a shot, you know. It was charged down. Ambitious from Pennant. And now he goes the other way. That's going to be a throw into St. George's College. Yep. Mona looking for the infringement. Not coming. But lovely response there from George's. It was, more, it was almost... Like Eric Cantona, you would remember that, Donald. He just executed, stood and watch with confidence. Well, I tell you what, he wouldn't have been used to or familiar with celebrating after scoring a goal, that's for sure. <laughs> Maybe that's right. So he probably was a little bit stunned. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking if the Cantona celebration was going to come after. Mona with a headed clearance and uh, Burkett. Letting fly with the left foot, making connection with the defender. And St. George's College looking to go ahead here. Diving head away. It was critical. 
he's hurt. That was brave from the defender. In that type of play, though, you, you can't blame the attacker for going for it. Now, look at the height of it. Yeah, he went very low, the defender. Well, so That looks to be Robinho Gordon. Yeah, he, he can't give the infringement against the attacker. And, and, and that's what he's asking there. Yes, it ended up being dangerous. Uh, but, yeah, no way you could have. You would say to your attacker, don't go for that one. I would be disappointed in him if he hadn't gone for it. Well, let's take a look back at this goal from Taylor. And the question is, did it come off the keeper? It did come off the keeper. Probably the back, yeah, when it was on its way down. Yeah, but I think it, I think it may have crossed the line, you know. Because look where the keeper actually ended up. It would have come off, well, would have come off the crossbar, would it, on the bar? If yeah, it, it hit have. there and then hit the keeper, then it wouldn't have gone across the line. So maybe, but I tell you what. It, it depends on where the keeper was. <laughs> well, it's back there and came off the crossbar. Yeah, it would have to be uh, coached in and back over the line. But tell you what, I won't move over the finer details. Um, leave that to the goal adjudication panel. For me, I'll just enjoy the execution of that strike. Mona again trying to get into the attacking third through Thomas. Outnumbered on that occasion. Taylor was fouled. We're in stoppage time. Reed. Mm. Just over the head of Spence who didn't pick up the trajectory early enough. You saw him waiting. A few steps back, and Reed is saying, Come and maybe, on. maybe the sun was directly in his eye as well, you know. Possibly, yeah. Coach Bell just showing off a bit of his skills. Was there a handle ball from Taylor? Yeah, yeah. There was. <laughs> but good players, they just need a moment, Donald. Not always in it, but. At those moments, they make you pay. Mona looking to manufacture one more moment before the interval. They're not messing around at the back now. Even two players going for that clearance. Parchment. Thomas giving chase, getting help from Peralto. Corner kick, no, or like a throw three. rather. Yeah. Yep. Georges was looking for the offside, but Thomas stayed onside. With the give and go with Peralto. Ball inside the area, headed away, still inside the box. St. George's College. Oh, the flag is going to be up for offside. Yeah, I just went a little bit too early, yeah. O'Neill. You saw it from across the way. <laughs> Didn't I have to, you feel? But he was so eager. Yeah. <laughs> Chance to go in front just before the half. Keep comes to an end. Lovely turn. But not much more. Parchment gets it again, though, for Mona. Straight to Reed. Reed to Spence. Peart beaten there. Free kick for Mona.
just need a little time to recover here. And he's got it, Gordon. Mm -hmm. More reprieve is coming as the half-time break is upon us. Yeah, just seconds away here. And uh, all the way through to Davis, no issues there. And that's that for the first half. Level at the interval, one apiece. Romarion Thomas getting his ninth goal of the campaign before Zabir Taylor getting his first. And uh, pretty much even Stevens as we were at the start of this one. But as expected, a really close contest. And now both teams will talk it over in the dressing room. 1 1 between Mona and St. George's College after 45 minutes. Lots to look ahead to on the home of champions as far as Champions League action is concerned on Sportsmax 2 Tuesday, 12.45 p.m. Uh, Jamaica time, 1.45 in the Eastern Caribbean, Lazio against Celtic. And also on Tuesday, Paris Saint-Germain will entertain uh, Newcastle at 3 p.m. Jamaica time, 4 in the Eastern Caribbean. You can watch that on Sportsmax 2. We've got a Tassara against Manchester United on Wednesday, 12.45 p.m., 1.45 ECT on Sportsmax 2. And uh, on Wednesday, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. ECT, Real Madrid, they go up against Napoli. And uh, on Wednesday, 3 o'clock, 4 p.m. ECT, Benfica doing battle with Inter Milan. And that's going to be on Sportsmax. Back here at Sabina Park, the first Manny Cup semi-final between Mona High and St. George's College. And it is 1-1 heading into the second half here, Dwight Jeremiah. It was a bit of a cagey affair. Both teams trying desperately not to make mistakes in that first half, you could tell. And, um, well, they weren't expressing themselves. Mona more so were expressing themselves, having a lot of the chances, but weren't quite clinical when they got into the attack in third. Yeah, and the more they try not to make the mistakes, the more they made it because they turned the ball over a lot, both these two teams. And um, yeah, Mona, they created the bulk of the opportunities, had longer stretch of uh, dominance, you feel. Uh, but when Georges did put things together and attack, build their attacks through the thirds, they looked a lot more fluent and dangerous. Uh, we saw that the go-to player for Mona has been their goal scorer, Marion Thomas. And they look to go wide on every occasion. They get looked to play that diagonal ball. And you can see why. Because at the moment, it's given the back line for Georges lots of problems to deal with. And uh, they, you, you bet they'll probably continue that unless Georges were to fix that in terms of the players judging the trajectory well and better and defending at the back post. So Georges will try to go to the gear as much better. And for Mona, it is to take the chances as they've been creating them. So it has the making for a proper second half if they can both get their acts together. Second half now on the way. Mona will start the proceedings here. They'll be kicking towards the crossroads region. And uh, St. George's College will be kicking uh, in the direction of downtown Kingston. St. George's College, of course, in the full blue kits if you're just joining us. And they are forced to do some defending now. Kashane Gordon on the left. Yep. They 
got that decision right. Craig Butler was thinking that it should have been Amona throwing, but they got that one right. Mona with the throw. Gordon trying to come across and control. St. George's College with the possession now. That one is nodded into touch by Swazo. Reed. Reed goes goalwards. No issues there for Akeem Bernard. Now it's looking to just cross that between the line of defenders and goalkeeper. That was a clear shove by Reed. Mackenzie just walked away. St. George's College going forward through Burkett. Burkett lays it out wide to Taylor. Taylor lays it back, and here's a shot by Reed. Not on target. Yeah, Burkett was looking to let fly. He saw that he was closed down centrally. Went to Taylor, but Taylor's first touch, and then the second one just trying to get going, but he was hounded, and Reed was the best option, and not a bad strike in the end. Yep, St. George's College with a, a big opportunity here. And, uh, just couldn't convert. They have been on target. And it was this Zabir Taylor effort. And if you take a look at if you take a look at it, it actually came off the bar and off the back of goalkeeper Akeem Bernard. So it's actually gone down as an own goal. So Taylor still looking for his first of the campaign. But yeah, officially it goes down as an own goal to Akeem Bernard. But we really have to give the credit, obviously, to Zabir Taylor. Yeah, I think um, George is at this moment not bothered by that. No, they're not. Just happy that they're level after going behind. But to cause Bernard to score that own goal then yeah give Taylor all the credit assisted on the own goal which would make that his fifth one <laughs> four <laughs> assists already this season <laughs> throw inside the area Mona bursting forward and had a couple of nibbles there in the middle of the park. That was Reed as yep. first attempt to try and make contact with the ball went into the mid rib. Reed, of course, plays at the Premier League level for Cavalier. Yeah. Here's an effort, a highly ambitious effort. Romario and Thomas already on the score sheet. None of these two teams in the Champions Cup anymore, so they were to exit the competition or lose today, and that would mean the end of their season. Yeah, it will be hard to accept for a few players, one would think, for their campaign to suddenly end 
with two defeats. Here's Mona striding forward, looking for an attempt, which was a bit off target again. Yeah, but not a lot. Not a bad effort, I would say. Yeah, because... Parchment he, there with the attempt. Yeah, had a lot of space driving forward. And the fence for Georges kept backing off and backing off. And he saw the opportunity and took it. To get the shot off, that is. Mona settling now. Trying to get going again. The switch to Gordon. Gordon does well. Lines up a shot into the side netting. You know, always peeling away there once he let fly, but yeah, he had one intention once he got around the defender and saw the space in front of him. And yeah, strike just peeling away. Here's Mona again. Mackenzie's effort is dragged wide of the mark again. They are taking their chances here. Well, not to not to full effect, obviously, but they are taking, the taking opportunity. their opportunities and yep. the shots. Mm -hmm. And for a moment there, Davis was a little concerned. They keep on coming. Brown trying to slip that one through. It goes the other way. And here's St. George's College trying to transition here. Burkett on it. Riding one challenge. Trying to play that one through, but they figured that he was already compromised there. But good for him that he actually didn't go down under the challenge. Probably taking too many touches off the ball there, Burkett. Neverbell not pleased. That's booted into touch by Pennant. Clark and Mitchell for George is working overtime. Mona starting the second half pretty much the way they started the first. Throw in. Handled well by St. George's College. Peralto gets it again. Swings that one across the box. There's an appeal for a free kick inside the D. And they get it. Mona High. Referee Perry thought about it for a bit. I think Georges will have too much quarrels with that one. But a good David, opportunity. Davis just making sure that everything is in order. Maybe a hint of nervous energy here. A number of players inside the wall. There's going to be at least five here. As the construction continues. Will Mona be looking to shift to the point of attack before striking? Not quite sure. Well, Mackenzie is there. Peralto is also there. And the goal scorer, Romarion Thomas, is there as well. Who will take it? It is Mackenzie! 
Wow! Denzel McKenzie! That was first class! Nothing Davis could have done in goal there! And with his 11th goal this season, Mackenzie again shows his quality in the schoolboy football arena. And Mona with the 2-1 advantage over St. George's College. Yeah, pace and precision was on that strike. Always going away from Davis, hitting the side netting as well. The back sanction there of the goal. Yeah, he just took a step to his left, uh, Davis. And I don't think if he had even taken the first one to his right, he would have gotten there. That one was always peering away from him. And Mona back in front. But the big man, Mackenzie, the player to watch coming into this one, stepped up to the plate here. I know he had a good shot on him. And he let fly there. And to think he may still yet have two more seasons in him. I highly doubt that. <laughs> He's not staying here, I don't think. <laughs> well, the option is there. <laughs> but I know what you're talking about, yeah. With strikes like those, if he does those with regularity, then I think your prediction will come through. We keep speaking about moments. Yeah. And that was a moment to remember. His 11th goal this campaign, Denzel McKenzie. Craig Butler say, saying he's the best midfielder in the schoolboy football arena. And with a free kick like that. Well, I guess it's just evidence that Butler can point to. Yep. Not that he's totally right, but yeah boy stacking up the evidence St. George's they have to come from behind again an opportunity here and Mona back in numbers with the clearance it did cross the line fans they do have a lot to cheer about for the second time today they've seen their team take the lead can Georges find a way back we have the players on the park to be able to do that saw already some quality from Taylor to get them back in the game Burkett saw a few moments a few moments in the game where he'll be looking for another but to do better with the opportunity did say this one had the making of a classic and this evening the goals being scored and heaven flow back and forth challenge coming in there and it's a throw into St. George's College as they try to respond once more it did take them about six minutes in the first half to get back on level inside the area headed away so that's a sweeping challenge and Mona will break and he mistimed his run that is so unfortunate again yeah. so eager really good that it happened because you know for George's sake uh, they were grieved that the whistle didn't go on the challenge that turned the ball over I think that challenge was on Burkett. I think it was fairly clean though. Bow played inside. They were looking for their number 10, Burkett. 
O'Neill has it. Plays it. Well, try to play it in the path of Spence, but too much on it. Yeah, he's had 12 assists so far, O'Neill, but that one wasn't going to materialize into another too heavy on that pass. Lots of time still left into the, in this one. 30 minutes or so. So this one by no means done and dusted and two George's technicians there just trying to figure whether there needs to be some changes. Probably just surveying the bench to see who might be the best option. instructions are given for players to get themselves ready for George's but his hands were outstretched wide as if he's missing a player <laughs> Don't know. Prob probably a player in the past <laughs> <laughs> for British Bill <laughs> download the sports Max app today from the Google Play or the App Store and uh, just keep in touch with everything that's happening in the schoolboy football arena in Jamaica, the SSFL, which is the equivalent in Trinidad and Tobago. A number of the matches free on Sportsmax Plus once you download the app. Lovely stuff. Almost came to fruition the final pass from Burkett. Suazo sends it high into the afternoon sky. St. George's College still with it. Reed switching the point of attack. Mm. Reed again. Peralto. Suazo gets a return from Peralto. St. George's College trying to play out from the back and they do so comfortably. A Johnny Peart goes long looking for Spence. Pass was a bit wayward. Yeah, and Reed had come short to, you know, holy for space in the middle of the park. And that's something evident today here that George's, they have not looked with the regularity to, as I said, play through the turns. Uh, look to cut out one or two ever so often. Reed. Spence. Trying to navigate the tight space there. Unsuccessful. Thomas with the turn. Thomas with the pass. The keeper responds late. But good thing his defender was backing him up. And that's Jindu Powell. Back on the park. Doing his job. Yeah, for a moment there. It looked like he was going to be outpaced. And I guess he felt so as well. That's why he made the, the, the last dish challenge. Freaky coming up for Mona High. Peralto to deliver the second corner kick delivered well inside and St. George's College they escape oh poor giveaway
Bradley is going to be called back. Free kick to Carlton Brown and Mona High. They've not really been themselves, Georges. I, I, you expect them to be much slicker and smoother when possession. And a lot of times you can't just say it's Mona who is causing them all that problem, not passing well, because a lot of times it's without pressure applied. An unforced error, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie looking for options, goes for the lob instead, and went all through, all the way through to Davis. Davis goes long. And Rubina Gordon himself a goal scorer. 14 goals to his name so far this season for Gordon as a center back. I remember him playing striker last season as well. Mona's number nine. He still held on to the number. <laughs> I tell you, that's what they do. I have a, a player who's an attacking midfielder and uh, plays that left back and he wants it his number 10 still. <laughs> For these boys, the number do matters. But as a coach, you give them what they want, if that's going to make them perform well. Yeah, they sacrifice for you. The least you can do is give them a number, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a number I can take. <laughs> <laughs> there are some coaches with the mindset of not giving certain numbers away to any member of your squad. So sometimes the number 10 is vacant or the number 7 is vacant. I guess that's because of the current Russian Messi and Ronaldo situation in world football. But now, whatever makes them happy. Another water break is upon us. As we are about midway of the second half and Mona High with the advantage over St. George's College. And as we take a look back at the goals here, Mona took the lead. And it was Thomas. He was so influential leading up to that moment. Romarian Thomas before getting his ninth season. And then Zabir Taylor with a wonderful effort on target. Came off the goalkeeper, Akeem Bernard. So it's going to be an own goal to him. But then look at this strike. You can watch that over and over again. Craig Butler would. Denzel McKenzie with his, his, his 11th goal of the campaign and what a hit that was, the free kick. Mm. 2-1 to Mona. Yeah, and, uh, what surprised me is that Georges allowed Mona to start the second half much the same way they did the first. And um, they yeah, did nothing about it. Just allowed him to come at them repeatedly. Uh, they, they didn't learn their lesson from the first half and uh, maybe because uh, they were put into a, a false sense of security that they can weather any storm uh, they did suffer and go a goal behind so not quite sure why they would believe that and again they'll have to do the hard work to come from behind to draw level Craig Butler and his Mona team are in their first major finals. The meteoric rise of Mona set to continue at least on the evidence of what is before us now. Peralto goes goalwards. And Mona actually making use of the difficulty that goalkeepers would how about that end when the sun is setting? Davis handled himself well on that occasion, but the sun is directly into the eyes of Davis. Yeah, certainly in the line of his vision, his sight, yeah. So, didn't think St. George's College used it, utilized no. it much in the first half. Didn't have a lot of consistent attacking moment. Maybe that one shot from Taylor that went in that would have contributed to it. Not trying to take anything away from it. Well, here's St. George's College now. They're lining up bodies inside the box, but that took a deflection. And uh, a substitution is going to be made by St. George's College. Thank you. 
I think it's O'Neill who has yep. come off. Yep. Jackie Henry comes on for O'Neill. There's the ball inside, and uh, Key Bernard comes out to collect. Yeah, O'Neill had four goals in the season. With that change, Henry Adrian Reed is going up a little bit further for St. George's College. Yep, time has come. Johnny Peart mm. hasn't had the best of games, inconsistent. And here is Mona. Good recovery here. Mitchell has used his body well in this game. I think he's lost any of those duels. Body checking. Mona looking for inspiration. Well, George is looking for inspiration, but Mona looking to hurt them even further. Taylor. Ball over the top, looking for Reed. Reed went to the turf. Referee Perry waves it off. Yeah, lost his balance when he took it down, so it was really off balance. And it would have been a very soft one. Mona, they have it. Burkett. Played that one short. Taylor coming to intercept. Mona almost barreling his way through. Well, that could have gone anywhere. Mona, they get it back to Thomas. And Mackenzie. And Suazo. Mackenzie. Lining up an effort straight down the throat of Davis. Yeah, George is again. We saw the evidence of it. Just, just turning the ball over. Just really some bad passes, some ten-yard passes that you would expect them normally to complete with their eyes closed. making a change Damarian Harris comes off Tayshawn McIntosh comes on to replace him Coach is just moving the chess pieces now. Yeah, McIntosh normally employed on the left side, but we'll see. Here's Mona. That's a wonderful ball to Thomas. Thomas still with it. Takes a shot, a snapshot. That was the intention, but didn't have the power or the direction. That was the first contribution from McIntosh, just releasing T um, Thomas. The game is going to be stretched now as Reed picks up a free kick. Yeah, time winding down for George's. Can Mona hold on? There's a delivery inside from Ed, uh, Johnny Peart. Taylor has it. Knocks it forward and broke it with a slight touch.
Peralta. St. George's College with the possession again and almost wasted it, but they managed to keep it. Again, the long ball, hopeful as it was, picked up by Spence. Reed with the run. Spence trying to find Reed but couldn't. St. George's College with the throw. Reed had no one nearby to assist him. Clark. Mona again having runners. Gordon giving chase. He's a fit boy, isn't he? Kashane Gordon delivers inside. And he took a deflection, you know, a slight one back there for St. George's College. That was Henry, the substitute. It's a corner kick now for Mona High. They'll take their time about it as well. George's will want to be concentrated here because with time winding down, don't want to give themselves a mountain to climb here. This is not already a mountain. Peralta to deliver. No, oh, that was a miss kick. Burkett moves away from Suazo, who commits the foul. Knows that he's going to go into the referee's book as he moves away from the scene of the crime. Burkett to deliver this free kick. They need quality. Headed away. Thomas lays it out wide. And Mona High there on the break. Oh, what an opportunity just disappearing there. I think it was Tayshawn McIntosh who just couldn't supply the pass inside. Here they come again, Mona. It's Mackenzie. Plays it through. A chance here for Gordon. Still Gordon. Forced further away. Sends it across. Davis couldn't hold on. He had to make a second attempt at it. And the touch was crucial for St. George's College as they remain in this semi final. It was a good attempt at him first, Davis, to take it. And good recovery from him. Swazo inside. Carlton Brown. Ball coming into the edge of the box. Taylor. And that one is put into touch. St. George's College will move quickly. They are set to make a change, but not yet as we take a look at Davis doing his endeavor best to prevent Mona from scoring. Burkett, challenge coming in from Suazo. Has to be careful of those because he's well already in the referee's book. Yeah, tried in carefully. No troubles there, did get all the ball. Well, the chain is going to be made by St. George's College and I believe that we have a sideline report. But we'll get to that shortly. As uh, play actually continued there before the change could have been made. Taylor. Taylor 
out wide. Burkett trying to go through a couple of defenders. He'll get it back, luckily. Now with the dink inside, clearance made. St. George's College still with the opportunity. They are recycling it. It's out wide now. They need the ball inside. And the challenge coming in. Was that Gordon again with the clearance? It was critical again. Yeah, and a first really consistent sequence of pressure here from St. George's. Mona settling it. Nicely done. Pedant in the way, but couldn't quite handle it. Sweeping challenge coming in. And St. George's College looking to manufacture something here. Burkett. Didn't quite come off, did it? Spence will try again. And Peralta was in the way. It's going to be a throw into St. George's College. And will they make the change now? Yes. Gerard, though, is on the sidelines. Gerard, what's happening? Yeah, thank you so much, Donald. Uh, yeah, so the St. George's College management team would have made a request of the fourth official for their goalkeeper, the George Davis, to wear a cap in goal. Now, the official said no, point blank. No, he cannot wear a cap according to the laws of the game. So I went into the rule book and I saw the FA Law 4 says non-dangerous protective equipment, for example, headgear, face mask, and knee and arm protectors made of soft, lightweight padded material is permitted as our goalkeeper's caps. Now, the cap that we're talking about is the, the cap that similarly uh, Petr Cech would have worn in his days at Chelsea, not the caps that the St. George's College team would have wanted Davis to wear. So, yeah, Davis, of course, difficulty with the sun in his eyes. The St. George's College team asking for him to wear a cap and they said no, point blank. Thanks, Gerard. Uh, and, and yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good point to be made. You, you can't just buy a cap from a vendor and just put it on. No, not the field. baseball caps. Yeah. You can't wear that because not the front the of it is hard. Yeah. yeah. But if you get one with a soft, soft enough uh, peak there, then you could wear one. Where's Beres Hammond when you need him? <laughs> Corner kick for Mona. And a snapshot taken. Oh, that, that didn't miss by much. Again, it was Thomas, you know. Yeah. Oh, he has been so involved. And certainly the man with his hand up for being player of this game. Yep. Georges needs something. Not that. As we take a look at the Sports Max app moment of the game, courtesy of the Sports Max app, and that was a lovely kick. It really was a wonderful free kick by Denzel McKenzie, giving Mona High the lead in this Manning Cup semi final over St. George's College, and <laughs> they loved it. Really big strike there to give Mona the lead and lead that they've held on to since that strike. I think that came in the 56th minute. And we're now in the 86th. Taylor. Ball sent out wide. Kept in play by Penance. Penance ball inside is not a bad one. And Mona with the clearance before Reed could get there. Just felt Reed could have attacked that one more. He's been put up front to be a target player, but they haven't been able to find him, Georges. 
Clark. Pennant inside. Mona in the way. Late challenger coming from Burkett, who goes into the referee's book. Mona on the verge here. They have to do some defending. And they continue to do so as Burkett lost it again. Mackenzie was looking for the free kick. It didn't come his way, the call. And now Spence sends it out wide to Reed. And the challenge is a crunching one again from Robinho Gordon. An outstanding game he's had this afternoon. It's been really good, but that was all Reed's doing. His first touch wasn't crisp enough, and he gave Gordon an opportunity to challenge, which he took expertly in the end. Free kick to St. George's College. A player is down for Mona. Lost a boot in the process there have been quite a few outstanding acts in this semi-final from the side of St. George's College I can think of Zabir Teal and the ship that he's put in as uh, well okay that's for st george's college for Mona High in particular i'm thinking of both robinho court and romarion thomas i'm not sure if you have anyone else in mind those are the two i'd, I'd mentioned thomas before because i think he was he was good he was always going to be the player that was going to cause a lot of problems for george he's opened the scoring and since then too has been uh, pretty much involved in everything attacking for uh mona uh, Gordon has been solid defensively, uh, but a lot of it too has been to George's um, inefficiency and crispness that we've come to expect of them. Um, so for me, I, I think Thomas has been consistently good throughout this game. Another change as a substitute who came on is off, Tayshawn McIntosh. At St. George's College, they, wait, they waste another opportunity. He didn't like it at all, Neville Bell. Seven minutes has been indicated for the time to be added on to this one. So still time for George's. Judges now they're looking to probe and to build up through the thirds, but because they've afforded the space. To the edge of the box that went, and a missed kick here, and a chance for St. George's College. Missed. Bernard providing the block there and denying Adrian Reed. Bernard was looking to get some time, went down as if he was injured, but got back up quite quickly. Corner kick taken. And Mackenzie is there to head that one away. Lobbed back inside. 
Mona was living on the edge there, you know. Yeah. That goes into touch. Well, that problem started by a missed kick from a defender. But he was bailed out by his goalkeeper. Reed couldn't execute well. Mm. Taylor with the mistake. That's a late challenge. Problems here. The other card shown to Clark. That has pretty much summed up George's play today. Taylor under no pressure. Misplaced pass and caused Clark to be late to commit that infringement. Brought down Clint Brown. Taylor has been your best player today, I think. For St. George's College. Yeah. And even he fell into the trap of giving the ball away. Can be contagious. Yeah. Just not had enough players on the park to really let that energy flow. But again, you know, Reed being put up front, the header, he didn't really show the urgency to get onto the end of it. And then that opportunity that fell to him just now. Keeper did well, yes. But I think he waited until the angle was too acute. Free kick opportunity for Mona High again. Brown is there and he has decided to leave it. Parchment is also there, goes straight into the ball. Gordon went straight to Davis. That could have sealed it. Yeah, and again, he was on the end of it. So one of the two players from Mona who really have, stand, have stood out here in this encounter. Or one of three. Burkett is the one who's taking the throw. Gets it back. Brian Burkett sends it inside the area again. And uh, uncertainty at the back, you know, for Mona. But in the end, Bernard comes across to collect it. And he'll eat up a few more seconds here. anywhere doing for Mona oh yes and the moment they defeated St. Andrew Technical many felt they were installed as favorites for this man in cup because St. Andrew Technical in the eyes of many would have been considered the, the overwhelming favorite yep. yet in pre-season for sure whole football played inside for Reed and again we've seen him not done those type of deliveries on so many occasions but nobody there to follow up with him About 90 seconds remaining for St. George's College to get the equalizer. 90 seconds for Mona to try and hold on. Anywhere will do. And again, a bad touch again for George's. But I'm not sure which of them turned up today. The George's one or the Brazilian one that never spoke about, but certainly not the one that has been effective enough. Burkett skipping by one challenge, playing the ball inside, and that wasn't the best clearance, you know. Still an opportunity for St. George's College. Oh, the slip at the crucial time. It's just not falling for them.
a half a minute remaining approximately. Desperation time for St. George's College. Spence. Clark. Clark getting by two. Clark taking a shot for some reason. And that's exactly the signal coming from Neville Bell from the sidelines. He had so many players in front of him to pick one or two out. Not long remaining now. Throw in to Mona. And they are on the verge here of history. So they may get another 30 seconds because Craig Butler asked him for time, but there were some stoppages in the extra time. Yellow card being shown. But they're just okay. concerned about the final whistle coming, those in the stands. Kenzie getting the yellow. Not a lot of time remaining. St. George's College trying to win it back. Free kick. Now we're about 30 seconds or so to go. They need more urgency, St. George's College. Deciding to play it back. They need to hoof this upfield if they want to send a chance here. But Mona defending stubbornly. That is it! Mona Prime soars here at Sabina Park. And these boys will be remembered for entering the final frontier. What a moment. They are not audacious anymore. They are planting their legacy. And these boys, led by Craig Butler and company, will be remembered for what they have done today. For the first time in their history, they will enter the Manny Cup final, and they will be there to celebrate. When we talk about a Goliath against Goliath, they've certainly risen over the years, and this Craig Butler era has been culminated in an appearance in the final. And I think we look at the player of this game, and for me, Thomas has been the main protagonist for them. And to get past, and he started this game bright was always in it always a source of outlet a means by which mona could turn to give george's lots of problems and lot to think about what they will be thinking about now mona is a place in the final and how they can lift the title it has been remarkable remarkable it's as if they broke through the sound barrier to reach where they are right now and an explosion of excitement and a bit of relief there because so much was riding on it for them and mona high winning this manic of semi-final by the odd goal in three as we take a look at the full-time highlights here and it was a little cage in that first half, you know. Mona did so well. Thomas, the instigator in chief, creating quite a few chances and creating trouble along this right hand side. Ball played inside. Davis held on to it. And St. George's College, they responded at times. Burkett with the effort that was wide of the mark on that occasion. He wasn't altogether accurate this afternoon and then the ball played inside the box the header off the bar good work there by Kashane Gordon to get on the end of it but uh, finding the woodwork and then the moment late in the first half they just couldn't clear St. George's College and it was that ball from Marion Thomas getting his ninth goal of the campaign in the shadows and putting that over the line giving Mona the lead just before the halftime interval in the 39th minute of play and they were ecstatic but they would respond St. George's College 
a few minutes later. Taylor with the effort. Bang, off the bar, then off Bernard and across the line. You have to give credit to Taylor. He's still looking for his first goal this season, though. An own goal awarded against Akeem Bernard. But St. George's College didn't mind. And it was 1-1 before the interval. Taylor taking the acclaim of the crowd in the second half. More opportunities. They were, were restricted to shots from outside the box. But this was magical from Denzel McKenzie. Wonderful kick. Look at the power. Look at the accuracy. McKenzie getting his 11th goal of the campaign with a stunning shot on target. And it proved to be the difference in this one. They could have had more. Gordon sending this across. Davis couldn't quite hold on. Had to put his life, limb, everything on the line to stop a shot coming in. And an opportunity here. And in the way was Bernard just stopping that one. Coming up big in the end for Mona, who celebrated with the energy that they gave for all of the 90 minutes here. As we take a look at the full-time match statistics, Mona, they had 14 shots, six on target. They were dominant in this game, especially in the attacking third, St. George's College. Eight shots, three on target. They were also quite physical, St. George's College. Two yellow cards apiece as well. And you can see the corner kicks. Four, well, I'm sure St. George's College had a couple of corner kicks in that as well. And in the end, the possession at 53 percent it is now time for the Didsel man of the match and he'll be getting his award Romarion Thomas yeah that's right thank you so much Dono Romario Thomas the man of the match being presented by Kaden Webley the junior brand manager of uh, Digicel thank you so much Kaden uh, Romario talk to me about this historic uh, event Talk to me about this historic event for Mona High. How good do you feel about achieving a very first final in your school's history? Well, I feel very great for going into the final, Manning Cup final, for the very first time. Yeah, talk to me about your game, though. Do you think you had the best game possible for today? No, it wasn't my best game, but I, I tried my best. Well, now, your focus is on the final. Um, are you expecting to play any team in particular or whoever comes in front of you, you're ready? It doesn't really matter. I'm very prepared. All right, well done to you. Congratulations Thank again, Romario. Yeah, Romario Thomas there from Mona High, the man of the match, embracing coach Neville Bell from St. George's College. Coach, we know it's always tough to lose a semi-final, um, but if you look back at how things would have gone today, where are some of the things that you would have hoped could have been done better by your St. George's College team? Well, it's always tough to lose, period, whether it's a semi-final or not. We didn't do enough. We didn't do enough. I thought we matched them on the field, but in front of goal, we didn't do much. And after they, they, they scored the second goal, as you saw, they put everybody behind the ball. It's always tough. Yeah. Um, but I'm very proud of these kids. Um, you know, we, uh, we did one better than last year. Last year, we ended up fifth, never made the semi-final, never made the Champions Cup. This year, we're in the semi-final, we're in the Champions Cup. Um, so, God willing, next year, we'll do even better. Yeah, speaking of next year, how do things look for you in terms of the players that you get to retain and possibly the new players coming into the program? We shouldn't be bad, you know, we shouldn't be bad. I think of the squad of about 25, I think we lose about five or six. So we shouldn't be bad, but, you know, we kind of have to get over this one first before we start thinking about next year. But, you know, to be honest, congrats to Mona. They worked hard. Um, they've been working hard all season. Um, so congrats to them. And I, I wish, I don't know who will, they will meet in the, in the final, but I wish both teams good, good luck. Thank you so much, Coach Bell. Yeah, man. Yeah, Coach Bertis Bell there from St. George's College embracing Coach Craig Butler, the technical director of Mona High. Coach Butler joined by Coach Peralta. Tell me about this game. How are you feeling creating history once again for this Mona Heights school? Boy, just just totally elated. Um, feeling it for the boys mostly. I mean, they're putting a lot of hard work and to get here is excellent for them. You know, really happy for them. Really happy for them. Yeah, going up 2-1. 
and then you park the bus again, similar tactics to what you did against it at the Technical High School. Is that something that is going to become a staple now in Mona High's uh, playing style? Well, it should be a staple for any intelligent team. Um, you have to have that component in your, in your, in your artillery, and we, we use it well. Um, the boys played out their hearts, you know. They played with everything, and the, the staff, the team, the coaching, and to have my mom here, you know. My mom raised me on her own, and to see her standing here and touching eight years old, and still cheering me on, and cheering on my teammates and my players. It really feels good, you know. A lot of people don't have that, and don't have the type of man I have. And she, everything that she taught, that fighting spirit that we passed on to the kids, that coming from us, Dana and I have been friends from our little boys. You know, to come up and see that we're here on this pitch and be able to do it. Just really proud. Yeah, nothing left to say after that other than congratulations. We'll see you in the final. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's not over. It's not over yet. Yeah, it's not over yet. That's his parting shot. Craig Butler in the aftermath of this wonderful result for Mona High. Uh, embodying Mona Pride beating St. George's College by two goals to one in this first Manny Cup semi-final here at Sabina Park. One more semi-final to go. It's a big one. Kingston College against Heidel High up next. Stay tuned. Yo, Issa. Yo, Issa. schoolboy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, money cup, only for your shield, you make willing cup, to watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup, which team I win the championship this season. Yo, it's a, what a one day for school, I got finished the league and beat now, which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a, make the fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle, looking at the good, but loan a support us from school and community. People nothing understand some of the super real they must have watch it on TV too. Country and turn your night be one reason. It's a school boy football. Good cup, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I get to beat your chest. It's a school boy football. That team could rise and that team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come and join the show. Yo, it's a that competition I never have been nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to school from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people hard but member wish party start. It's a school boy football. Run come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. It's a school boy football. That team could rise and that team could fall. But the never will know until the whistle blows around, come enjoy the show. It's a 